What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Doyle back with another video. I know you miss me, bro. I missed you, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's been two weeks. No uploads, no nothing. If you're on my Instagram, you this is I've been posting every single day on Instagram. But YouTube took a little break. You know what I'm saying? Get my mind right. Get back in a groove of trading. But we back uploading content. Now, um, you clicked on this video because of the title. This video, free game. You know what I'm saying? Like we gotta get to the next level by the end of this year. I do not wanna see the same people that's watching my channel at least haven't grown as a trader. Like we have to grow. Like it's no, I'm still the same person by December. No, by the end of this year, you need to be an evolved type of trader. You don't have to be exactly where you wanna be at, but you gotta be in a better position than you are today watching this video. Now I'm gonna go on the charts and I'm gonna show you all the three confirmations that I look for when taking my supply and demand setups. Everybody know I mainly trade supply and demand. There's other strategies that I use, but the main one, bread and butter, supply and demand. So let's go on the charts and get these gems, man. All right, so let's get into it, man. First things first, I wanna say this. If you're just constantly consuming educational videos on YouTube, you're gonna be lost. If you're making money, click off the video. You don't need to watch this video. If you kind of not like you making money, then you losing money, watch this video. But if you already making money, it's no point. Come back a couple more days, it's gonna be another upload from Doyle. Now, let's get into it, man. Now, supply and demand, you're gonna see it all over the place. I'm not gonna lie, you're gonna see it on 15 minutes, you're gonna see it on one hour, five minute, you're gonna see it on a one minute, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna see it on 30 minutes, you're gonna see it all over the place, okay? I mainly like mine on a five minute, but that doesn't mean you gotta trade on a five minute, okay? My top three confirmations that I need on my setups mainly. Now, it's not going to always work out like this because the market is not going to just be beautiful like this. But this is my cookie cutter, like the beautiful setups that I really have a lot of confidence in. And I'm not saying I'm over leveraging. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying I feel very, very confident when I see these uh, line up. Now, the first confirmation that I need on my supply and demand setups is a whole high being broken or a whole low being broken, AKA break of structure. Now that is very simple information, but I'm trying to tell you, you're going to see some planning man in ranges, okay? So I'm gonna draw the illustration because you can still make money trading some planning man like that. So if the market is ranging like that, this may still be supply. This may, this may still be demand. You're still consolidating though. You're still trading in a range. So yes, you may win on um, like the market conditions like this. However, I feel like supply and demand is a trend trading strategy. It should be traded when there is breaking structure. Okay, when they're making new highs and making whole new lows. Okay, there shouldn't be too much um, supply and demand trading when it's ranging. Okay, I just want to say that for people that want to just keep trading supply and demand in all market conditions. I don't even do that. So this right here, this is cool until something like that happens or something like this happens. That's going to happen, bro. Sometimes your supply and demand zone may not hold. Me personally, I like when the structure is being broken first, giving me an indication that we're going with the correct trend. OK, so right here, let's take this stuff off. Right here, we got a break of structure. Okay, this whole high was broken, period. That whole high was broken. Right now, I will be looking for some type of demand setup at the bottom of that swing or some type of aggressive buying coming out that area just to show that they want to stop at a certain area. Now, right here, this is where I would draw my demand zone because this was the first bullish run. That's a bullish run right there. So we got a bullish run right here, a break of structure, and we're going with the trend. Now this goes into confirmation number two, okay? Now remember, I don't really care too much about indicators. Indicators lag, they're slow as hell. You can be blinded by moving averages. But me personally, the 200 EMA, I have talked about this like two years ago. The 200 EMA is my favorite indicator. I'm not gonna lie because it's a higher time frame moving average. Don't get me wrong, sometimes it can be in the way. Market structure is key. But at the end of the day, I feel confident when a 200 EMA is in confluence with my supply and demand setup. So if I'm taking a demand setup, I want my 200 EMA to be at the bottom, 
period. I, it need to be at the bottom. It don't need to be cut through the middle. It don't need to be at the top. I need my demand setups to be um, beautiful like this, okay? I need the 200 to be at the bottom. So confirmation number one, I'm gonna go real slow. Confirmation number one, break of structure. I need majority of my supply and demand setups to have a break of structure. If they don't, I don't feel confident. I don't like trading supply and demand ranges. Number two, I want my EMAs to make sense. 200 EMA gotta be at the bottom far as the demand. Now let's fast forward because we're gonna talk about confirmation number three as far as taking these supply and demand trades. Okay. Now you see that right there? You see how they're holding on this demand zone? No candles are closing in the zone. That is confirmation number three, okay? For me taking so many supply and demand sales last year, man, people that's in the Discord, you already know, like, you can just scroll and see the history of the wins. It, listen, when price holds on a demand, but don't close in the demand, that is an indication that they want to hold on that level. I'm gonna say that one more time. When price comes into a demand zone or even a supply zone, doesn't matter. When no candles close in that zone and they start rejecting it, like waking the zone, but not closing in the zone, in my mind and off of experience, I see that those hold the most, okay? Write that down. So when I see stuff like this, where they're holding on the demand zone and not closing in the, in the demand zone, I like that, okay? I like that. So I will be entering a buy as soon as they give me my entry. And obviously they gave me the break of the candle right there. I would have took that, okay? So we're gonna go through a supply setup. I'm gonna break that down, but it's the same rules. Break a structure, go away from the 200 EMA, and I want some rejections on my zone, okay? Those three things have to be on there, okay? Like those are mainly, like when I take my trades this week, I'm looking for this, like period. I'm looking for a break of structure, I'm looking for a demand or, or a supply setup, and I want it to go away from 200. Let's go to the supply. I'm on UJ, okay? Both of these um, setups are on UJ. Now, let's look at this. First step, what's the first step? Break a structure, okay? We made a whole new low, boom. Just like that, made a whole new low. Second, we got aggressive selling coming out that area. This is the start of that, that, uh, that bearish run. So I will draw my supply zone, will leave right here. Just like that. Now, step two. We're going away from the 200 EMA. Yes, we are. So if I fast forward, what happens in the zone? We get a rejection. The rest is history. No candles closed in my supply zone. I feel confident to take that trade. So I don't know for people that trade supply and demand, everybody trades supply and demand differently. I'm not saying I'm the best at trading supply and demand. I just go off of what has been working and I pay attention to what happens when it gets into my zone. And I notice when candles don't close into my zone and they reject it, those are the ones that I really wanna hold. So um, I hope y'all run with this, uh, these little quick little gems for the beginning of the year. Um, I'm gonna be taking these trades tomorrow. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm looking, well not Wednesday, I don't trade on Wednesdays, but Thursday, Friday, I'm looking for this, okay? I want myself to have a break of structure. Sometimes, it's not gonna be beautiful like this. Like when you back test this after this video, you're gonna see like, it's not gonna always be beautiful like the uh, examples that Doyle showed today. But understand when you gotta break a structure, when you go away from 200 and it rejects that zone, you got a high chance of winning that trade, man. Like, and that these are the mostly, these mostly the setups that I'm taking. Like I'm not really taking anything else. Like liquidity grab setups, like I'm barely trading that. I just love supply and demand. That's just what I do. That's what's been making me money. So that's what I'm about to stick to, okay? Um, other than that, man, like those three confirmations give me the, that's all I need, bro. And of course, like higher time frame confluence and, um, seeing if they took out liquidity previously to this uh, supply or previously to that demand, but definitely, man, just pay attention to what's happening in your zone. If you trade supply and demand, pay attention to what's going on in your, in your zone. No matter if it win or lose, just see what is the candles being printed at your zone. So you can get an idea, um, on what trades hit and what trades don't hit. Because certain candlestick patterns that happen at the zone will be a loser. When I see that, I'll be a little iffy when I wanna take the trade. But um, yeah, man, like I just wanna keep this video short and sweet, man. Like um, last week was my first full week of trading. It was a profitable week, but it was a little rocky though. I took a few losses, not gonna lie. But that's okay, we at the beginning of the year, it's only January. Like 
we still got the half of um, January and we got the rest of this year to um, really make some profits, man. So good luck this year, man. Like I'm gonna try to take, stay consistent on YouTube, but I'm still trading myself. Like I'm still in the trenches. So if you see the upload slow down, understand that I'm really just trading. I'm just not really doing the YouTube stuff like that, bro. But other than that, man, wish y'all the best, bro. More videos coming this week, man. Car convo videos coming. Um, I'm gonna try to do some more public interviews with my cameraman. If you're watching this, I will be hitting you up, bro, so we can do some more public interviews. Um, other than that, bro, I just wish y'all the best, bro. Like, I'm when I when I disappear, remember, I'm always on Instagram, always. But that's all I got. Peace and love. I'm out.